Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at the risk metric. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and if you wanna access this risk metric, then check out my website, intothecryptoverse.com. So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna explain what's going on. If you follow the channel for a long time, you know exactly, you know exactly what this is, right? So on the primary y-axis, we have the price of Bitcoin on a logarithmic scale, Right, so that means that every major tick is 10x, okay? We have time on the x-axis, and then it's color-coded by the risk metric, right? And it goes from zero to one. Now, the risk metric is not published, right? It's, it's, the, you know, it's one of the few things I keep to myself, but it's based on historical uh, prices, time, and uh, volatility. And it takes into account lengthening cycles, too. Right, so this is important because if if we assume that past volatility, right, is is indicative of of it reaching that same level of, level of volatility in the future, then we're probably not doing something right. Because in addition to anticipating lengthening cycles, we also anticipate diminishing returns. And if we and if we anticipate that we're going to see another 100x move from the bottom to the top, like last cycle, then it could be it could cause people to kind of be left high and dry because they're expecting Bitcoin to go to maybe 300,000 uh, this market cycle, when in reality, it really likely has no hope of, of making it anywhere close to that point before seeing a significant correction. So if you're not familiar with it, the idea, right, is that if it's blue, if it's zero, it's historically a great time to purchase Bitcoin. If it's red, it's historically a good time to sell Bitcoin, right? And, and the idea, of course, is you're, you're generally buying when the risk is low and you're selling when the risk is high. So it takes out the emotion from the equation. You don't have to worry about, you know, what is, you know, how do I feel today? Do I think it's going to go up another 2x? Not based on any fundamental or technical reasons, right? But just because I, 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 I think that that's the number that will get me to, to where I want to be, right? That's the number that maybe gets my portfolio to, say, like a million dollars or, or five million dollars, right? Now, what we do here is, is we, 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 we use a dynamic DCA approach. So let me, let me explain that a little bit further as we, as we move forward. So the first thing I want to do here is take out the color code from the risk metric. So instead of having it color coded anymore, we're taking it out and we're plotting it on the secondary y-axis, which is the risk. So price on the primary y-axis, risk on the secondary y-axis, okay? And the idea, right, is any time, especially that it gets below 0.2, this is this is where it's kind of like the opportunity of a lifetime, right? You you recognize that there's a lot of fear in the market, but at the same time, you look you look back in time and look to see the other times it reached this level and say, you know what? Uh, there's a lot of fear in the market, but I, I recognize that any time it's reached this level in the past, it's almost immediately, immediately corrected. Uh, so this is this is the first goal, right? So to identify these times when it's the most lucrative to get in, right? Because in general, you're likely to experience a decent ROI. The only people that saw 4x ROI trading at spot price last year um, were the people that bought at 3100 at the end of 2018 and then sold for you know around 14,000 in 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 2019. So the goal here. If we if we outline it a bit more, if you follow a moderate risk tolerance approach, which is what I do, I buy up to a risk level of 0.5, okay, and I sell above those risk levels. So in 2019, I I took some profits here, right, and it currently, I mean, to be completely honest, I have not taken profits uh, since then on Bitcoin. Now. You might be wondering, well, you could apply this to other coins, and we have, right? We on the premium list, we 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 have it applied to not only Bitcoin, we have it applied to Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, Monero, Litecoin, XRP. Uh, likely going to have some more coins in the future as we get more data and we become more confident in in what the risk metric is for those coins, right? You need you need a lot of data because it's based on that historical data. So the idea is is that we buy generally in this risk level. And by the way, for coins like Chainlink, this type of metric worked out really well. You know, we have the alerts channel and I, I, I published, I told people what I was doing at what risk levels, right? And it ended up being that we sold two thirds, or at least I did and, and whoever followed along, we sold two thirds of our link on the way up. And four fifteenths of that, by the way, 
was at 1850 and link is back down to ten dollars now so the, i think the risk metric is really useful one of the reasons why why i use it is because i i, I don't trust my own emotions to make uh, you know decent calls on the market i'd rather just stick to the math right my undergrad was in math my phd was in engineering i'd rather just stick to what the math says than than try to you know try to trade based on how i feel that day so you know, one idea again is to buy, you just dynamically DCA your, your buys up to a risk level of 0.5, and then above that, you're, you're, you're dynamically selling. Now, you could follow a different strategy, right? You could follow a strategy where you start selling at 0.4 if you want to be a bit more conservative, right? And then you're, you have, you would have been selling at three different risk bands in 2019, and you would have sold, sold some up here in, in the current risk band. Other people want to be a bit more aggressive and maybe they want to buy Bitcoin up to a risk level of 0.6. Okay, so this is another this is another way that people could look at look at it. I mean, you can see that the current risk level for Bitcoin is is you know it basically in the middle of the risk band between 0.4 and 0.5, a little bit to the to the lower side given the the recent pullback. But you can see it's it's close to being in the middle of the 0.4 to 0.5 risk regime. Now. Another idea, and we've talked about this before, right, is you could have maybe like a gray region or, or a region where you really don't do anything. Maybe you buy it up to a certain level, like 0.4, and you start selling it above 0.6, but in order to mitigate the idea of you know buying it and then selling it, uh, you, you just don't do anything in this regime. And this can also be useful for, say, tax purposes, right? If, if you're wanting to uh, maybe try to avoid having to pay short-term capital gains and you want to focus on, on holding for at least a year, of course, it depends on exactly where you live, your tax bracket, uh, you know, a, a lot of different factors, then you, you might want to consider uh, having a region where you don't do anything, right? And, and the reason is because maybe it, it lets you hold that crypto for long enough so that you, you reach that long-term capital, capital gains tax rate. So this is another idea. You could, be, you, could, you, know, you could do it like this, where you only buy up to 0.3 and you sell up, uh, start selling at 0.7. One of, the, one of the most common questions I get, right, is, is why would you stop buying at 0.5 if you think it's going to go up to 100K? Like, why would you stop buying at 0.5 risk if you think it's going to continue to go up? Well, remember... There's other asset classes out there, right? And and personally, I want to move into crypto when the sharp ratio is, you know, when the risk adjusted returns are the most attractive, right? If if I get into crypto once it's already up three or four x, like on average, like once Bitcoin is up to say, uh, let's say Bitcoin gets up to say twenty k, and then I start investing, well, the risk on that is a lot higher than getting in now. So by that point, you know, when Bitcoin's like 30K, 40K, 50K, et cetera, I'm not going to be putting money into the market most likely, right? I'm going to be putting money into either other markets or other cryptocurrencies. So the goal is to buy Bitcoin when it's the mo and when it makes the most sense to buy Bitcoin and to not buy it when the risk levels go up. Because the first thing you have to admit, right, is we don't know where the top is. No one knows where the top is. And, and those who do, I think, are just are, are, are lying to themselves. So there's a lot of different strategies. You could take the YOLO approach, right, where you just buy up to certain risk levels and then you sell, you try to sell the top. The downside of trying to sell the top, right, is, you know, what happens if, if you say you're going to pick a certain number and then sell at that point? Uh, it might work out for you, right? But imagine in, say, 2017, if you had picked $25,000 per Bitcoin was your magic number and it never made it there, right? And then you saw it come crashing down. So the idea is to identify, we don't know where the top is, right? We had a useful exercise with Chainlink recently, you know, selling some all the way up, maybe like at $10, at, at $15. I don't, I don't remember the exact price points we did it. It's all documented on the, on the alerts channel. And then at $18.50. Uh, but again, looking back on it, we recognize, okay, it worked out really well. We didn't know where the top was. And had it gone to $30, we would have had more to sell. And you might be wondering how we do that. So the way we do that is we, we dynamically DCA the cells, okay? So this means, right, and, and the reason I do this, of course, is because, you know, if you're in crypto, it, you, you probably want to take a little bit more risk, right? You, you want to be a bit riskier, otherwise you wouldn't be in crypto. So... But you also want to sell, right, during any type of bubble formation, right? You want to sell any time a bubble forms so that you can almost treat it as like a, a source of secondary income, right? If you're, if you're just buying crypto when the risk levels are low and then you, you just wait for the risk levels to go up, right? You stop your buys, you start your sells. It's a way you can kind of generate a, a secondary revenue stream, like a, a secondary income stream, if you will. 
So what you want to do, right, is you want to take advantage of moves where we get into this level here and you only sell Y. Here you sell 2Y. Now what does that mean? Well, if we add up all of these risk levels, we get Y plus 2Y plus 3Y plus 4Y plus 5Y equals the total number of Bitcoin that you own. So once we cross this threshold, you calculate how many Bitcoin you own, you solve this equation for Y, which is the total number of Bitcoin divided by 15, right? This is a linear schedule. You could also do it exponential, right? I mean, you could, you could double it every time. It could be Y, 2Y, 4Y, 8Y, 16Y. I don't really recommend that approach because it weights too much of it at the top, which there's no guarantee we're gonna reach, right? So let's give an example. Suppose you have 10 Bitcoin. Suppose that you're, you've been able to amass 10 Bitcoin by the time that the Bitcoin risk gets above 0.5, okay? That means you would solve for Y, and Y is two thirds, right? Because you have 10 Bitcoin, you divide it by 15, this is equal to two thirds. So when it gets into this level, you sell two thirds of a Bitcoin. Here you sell four thirds, here you sell two Bitcoin, here eight thirds and 10 thirds. Uh, if we wanna write it in decimal format, this would be 0.67 Bitcoin, 1.33 Bitcoin, 2 Bitcoin, 2.67 Bitcoin, and 3.33 Bitcoin. So it basically allows you to sell a majority of it right near the top if we reach that risk level. So three and a third plus two and two thirds, right, is six. So it would mean selling six of your Bitcoin up between the 0.8 to one risk regime, okay? And, and really we wanna maximize the amount we're selling at the higher risk levels while also recognizing that there's a chance we don't make it up to that risk level, right? We've made it up to these risk levels historically speaking, but what if we don't? And, and this is what happened in 2019, right? We came up to, point, to, to between 0.6 and 0.7, but we didn't quite make it all the way up, and then we came back down. So at least in this situation, you would have sold two of your Bitcoin. So then you had 10 Bitcoin, you sold two of it at these higher price levels. Once it gets back into these price levels, you start DCAing your buys again. You just systematically DCA the buys. It doesn't mean you just take the entire, you know, let's say you sold these two Bitcoin for um, $13,000, then maybe you have $26,000. Uh, you don't necessarily just want to purchase everything, you know, use that entire 26 grand uh, and purchase it the minute it falls below 0.5. What I would suggest doing, right, is just dynamically DCA weekly, right, or monthly, right, where you just put the same amount um, or the same amount in depending on the risk level. So in the same way that you can dynamically DCA your sells on the way up, you can dynamically DCA your buys on the way down. So let's say that your X were $100 or say, let's say $1,000, right? So maybe, maybe this week you put in $1,000. If the risk were to drop to between 0.3 and 0.4, next week you would put in $2,000 and so on and so forth. So back in March, if you were following that strategy, then on that week you would have put in $4,000. So this helps lower your 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 weighted risk right of the market. You can you can calculate all the the, the times you bought Bitcoin, look to see what the risk level was, and 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 recognize okay, well the the risk that I bought Bitcoin at is really high. How can I fix this in the future? And the goal, right, is, is to start accumulating at a level that you're comfortable with, right? And for me, I buy up to a risk level of 0.5. And if we drop back down, so let's say we don't hold the 20 week moving average and we drop back down, then I'm just, I'm, 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 I have that dry powder on the side, right? I'm ready to move it into the market if we get that opportunity. So this is the goal, right? It's a systematic approach. We have this metric. Uh, a similar type metrics for Ethereum, which by the way, we were able to use for Ethereum to take profits. Um, and, and, I, and I put out what the stop losses, you know, would be if you're wanting to take profits at, the, at a certain risk band, right? We have, not only do we have the risk levels against USD, we also have the Bitcoin, like the altcoin Bitcoin risk level and the altcoin Ethereum risk level. So Ethereum, the Ethereum Bitcoin risk re recently reached um, 0.6. Right, and I said, okay, well, if you want to take profits at this 0.6 risk level, then you want to DCA out to out to Bitcoin at uh, an Ethereum Bitcoin valuation of 0.0385, and that worked out well for a lot of people. And then the the USD risk level to take profits uh, was was um, 400 and and like 34 dollars or something like that. So again, it it allows you to take profits when any type of bubble forms. It becomes kind of a secondary revenue stream. Uh, and and when the when the prices go down, we don't get upset. We say, okay, well, in order for this cycle up here to continue of DCAing my cells dynamically on the way up, 
right? I need to be able to accumulate the Bitcoin at some point, right? Um, maybe some of you have been accumulating it since 2017, uh, but this is the time to learn from your mistakes. Like, right, learn from your mistakes, recognize that if the risk starts going back up to, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1, this is the time, historically speaking, to be DCAing out of the market, not the dumb money FOMOing into the market. So I would say, learn from your mistakes, follow something, right? It doesn't have to be the risk metric, but I would say follow something. Now, you can see this is the general trend of the market. It, you, I, I feel like this also shows the general idea of lengthening cycles. Uh, we can also plot on here the price versus the risk, and you can generally see the, the moves that we have, right? The, the, the low to the high, so the low risk to the high risk, to the low risk to the high, to the low to the high, to the low to the high. And what you see is that the, the risk levels are dynamic, right? They adjust over time based on the, 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 the Bitcoin price, right? So you can see that the, the risk here at point one uh, once once upon a time it corresponded to 10 cents later it corresponded to 30 dollars right later it corresponded to um 200 and then most recently it corresponded to approximately three thousand dollars so it, it appears that we're you know we're systematically moving up um and that we kind of form these loops right uh, that, that more or less form and the idea right is again is to just be be, be accumulating uh, if you're following the moderate risk approach below 0.5, which you can see, we almost made it up to 0.5, but not quite. So it's still a, it's still business as usual, right? In terms of accumulation, uh, once we move up into this risk band, right, which will hopefully take us to 100k, uh, this is where I would be personally DCAing my cells. So again, if we hold the 20-week and we move up, then and and the risk gets above 0.5, then I'll just have to be happy with the Bitcoin I own, and then I'll have to you know start selling it dynamically. If we get an opportunity again to, to go below, maybe we go below 10,000 back to 9,000 or 8,000, maybe 7,000. If we hit these levels again, for me personally, I'm going to treat this as um, kind of like a last opportunity this cycle to accumulate Bitcoin at those prices. This is my, my perception of the markets. I think we're going to a sustainable 20K in about 16 months or so. So be on the lookout for that. And I think it will be a slower move up rather than a parabolic move up. And then once we get there, we'll go into price discovery mode and, and seek out uh, you know, a six-figure Bitcoin. So if you guys like the content, you like the risk levels, you want to be involved in that, you know, check out my website, intothecryptoverse.com. And if I pull it up, you can see it, intothecryptoverse.com. By signing up, you get access to the risk dashboard, right? You get access to this risk analysis data with actionable insights. You can use it to dynamically buy and sell, right? And it, and it goes for a lot of the different cryptocurrencies that we follow. So you, you get access to the risk analysis for Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Cardano, Chainlink, XRP, Litecoin, and Monero. Those are the ones we have right now. You also get access to a weekly premium report, a weekly premium video, a strategy dashboard in terms of dynamically DCA selling, a uh, private Telegram alerts channel, and a private Telegram chat room. So if this all sounds good to you, check it out. The prices are going up on September 28th. So if you want to get grandfathered in at the lower price, I would encourage you to sign up before then. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel at the very least. I'll do public videos on the risk metric every so often. Um, so subscribe to the channel at the very least. Give the video a thumbs up. Also click the bell icon if you want to turn your notifications on. Let me know what you guys think about the risk metric in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.